Crazy. Freshness of morning brings every new day. Beauty and bird song sweetens the air. Hear the bird chorus, feel new beginnings. Nature's abundance filling the the moist rainfall gifted from God. Walk on the wetness, barefoot delight. Ours is the beauty of innocent mornings. Sunlight reflecting, shining so new moments together we share freshness of morning brings every new day beauty of birth song sweetens the air hear the bird chorus feel the abundance filling the world. Amen. Welcome to church. We're grateful to see you. Bruce Lohman is here in the person. We've only seen you on Zoom for so long, so good to see you. There you go. That's amen. A, that's an amen for most of us today who are here a little earlier than our bodies are used to. We are a people of extravagant welcome, and we'd love to say, no, no matter, matter who, who you are or where, where you are, are on life's, on life's journey, journey, you, you are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Um, as we do our land acknowledgement, uh, this week we're learning more about the Hopi people. Um, as we are learning about differing matrilineal First Nations here in the United States. Although completely surrounded by the Navajo Reservation, the Hopi people have a long history that is distinctly different from their neighbors. The major Hopi villages are located at the top of three mesas in northeastern Arizona. Each village is independent and practices its own style of government. All Hopi villages have gifted artisans and distinctions can be made by the crafts of each village produce, produces. All Hopi villages produce kachina doll carvings. Crafts may be purchased directly from the artisans or from the locally owned shops on the Hopi reservation. Visitors are welcome to the Hopi reservation through photography, sketching, videotaping, and sound recording is strictly prohibited in some villages. If visitors are allowed to witness a Hopi ceremony, they should be respectful and you should actually feel very honored if you are ever invited to be a part of one of their ceremonies. It means that they trust you. The primary meaning of the word Hopi is behaving one, one who is mannered, civilized, peaceable, polite, who adheres to the Hopi way. Some sources contrast this to other warring tribes that subsist on plunder. 
But Hopi is a concept deeply rooted in the culture's religion, spirituality, and its view of morality and ethics. To be Hopi is to strive towards this concept, which involves a state of total reverence for all things, peace with these things, and life in accordance with the instructions of Ma'asa, the creator and caretaker of earth. The Hopi observe their traditional ceremonies for the benefit of the entire world. Traditionally, Hopi are organized into matrilineal clans. Children are born into the clan of their mother. Clans extend across all village, villages. Children are named by the women of the father's clan, and the child is introduced to the son. The women of the paternal clan gather. The name, they name the child in honor of the father's clan. Children can be given over 40 names. The village members decide the common name. Current practice is to use a non-Hopi or English name or the parent's chosen Hopi name. A person may also change the name upon initiation to traditional religious societies or a major life event. Prehistoric architecture dictates how social structures influence the creation of homes before European contact. Many Hopi homes were created with Pueblo influence as well. Archaeological digs have uncovered various room structures reflecting social practices during this period. During the 1970s, a group of archaeologists assembled a few basic types of rooms used in prehistoric Hopi life, living rooms, storage rooms, and religious ceremonial rooms called kivas. Each of these rooms allowed for the Hopi to hold ceremonies, cook, and even forge hunting equipment. One of our Presbyterian churches down in Arizona, actually, um, when they recreated their sanctuary, they did it in the round like a kiva. The Hopi have always viewed their land as sacred, seeing themselves as caretakers of the land that they inherited from their ancestors. They did not conceive of abounding or dividing land. Agriculture is very important, and the villages are now located atop mesas there in northern Arizona. There's a little bit of local history for the Hopis as well. Over 100 years ago, in September of 1895, 19 Hopi men from Oribe returned home after spending nearly a year imprisoned on Alcatraz Island. There was an ongoing project to commemorate the 100th anniversary of their release in 1996 and to document and record Hopi testimony about central events in Hopi history. The story of the Alcatraz prisoners is one episode in an ongoing struggle between the Hopi people and the United States government. The late 19th century witnessed increased attacks on Hopi sovereignty and culture as the United States government acted to Americanize the Hopi people. Imprisonment became the government's principal means of intimidation and punishment. Quite a people and quite a story of resilience in spite of our country's um, desire to assimilate them. Uh, we do have a couple announcements here. They uh, look like this in the email. We have some birthdays, Ken Schmidt, Nancy Cundiff, Okoro Umozuriki, and a couple anniversaries, Janice and Jim Campbell, and Carol and Cal Krishnan. So let's sing to all of them. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. That's right. Um, so April 22nd is the vaudeville comes to East County. Did you want to say anything about that, Elaine? Okay, come on over here. Um, the other announcements that we have is we're continuing um, to go through the Coping with Nationalism's curriculum on Tuesday mornings from Father Tom. And our Wednesday afternoon social hour, happy hour, is Wednesdays at noon on Zoom, where we get to check in with the whole church at home as well as the church here. Thank you. Um, yes, Vaudeville is coming to East County. And I would like to give a shout out to Mary Mary Burks, who's collecting raffle prizes so we can sell lots of raffle tickets, um, to several people who have offered to um, be in our skits. And if I haven't talked to you yet, I am coming for you. So yeah, uh, just so you know, just so you know. Um, we have several people coming from different places. I have a friend in San Francisco who is a, a local community theater 
a person there who's planning to come over and sing for us. Um, Barbara Ham from Benicia has agreed to come. Um, and I think Mary has recruited some people from PCT. So we should have lots of entertainment, lots of good prizes. I need some cookie bakers. I don't know if you remember our last time, we, instead of offering refreshments afterwards, which requires a, clean, a setup and cleanup crew, nobody wants to do that, we packaged up a couple cookies with a bookmark or a business card and some hard candies in a little swag bag for people to take as they left. So they got to have refreshments. We just didn't have to do any extra work for it except for ahead of time. So I'm looking for about five or six people who will make three dozen cookies. I am also needing some ushers, maybe somebody to help with the lights and the sound and so forth. So there's lots of work for people to do, uh, lots of places to volunteer, um, and I'm just very grateful. We do have some great prizes already coming in. I just got four tickets to an A's game just this week, so that will be in the raffles. If you know of anybody in local merchants who might be willing to donate something or if you'd like to make a gift basket. We have several of those coming too. So let's make it exciting. Last time we raised $1,400. I'd really like to hit two grand this time. Good morning, church. So what's next is the lighting of the peace candle. Oh God, we pray for our country. May we be a people of humility, generosity, and compassion. May the weakest among us, the unloved and the unfortunate, the elderly, and the ill be shown your justice and mercy. May those who are oppressed be set free. We pray that hate and acrimony, and acrimony may give way to love and harmony. We invoke Christ's peace. Help us to open our hearts to your peace so we may be peacemakers in your name. Amen. Good morning, church. As the sound of our singing bowl reverberates throughout the land, throughout our hearts, bringing peace amongst us, let us reach out to our ancestors in the African American tradition and pour libations, calling upon those ancestors to be with us this morning as we worship as we look forward, because we are also able to look back, we learn our history, which roots us in our present and helps us be visionaries as we look forward. So this morning, we call upon those who have lifted us up, who have laid a path for us, who have nurtured us, And we give thanks for them as they come and be with us in worship. Let us call out their names this morning as we pour water that nurtures the earth as the rain is nurturing us. Amen? Amen.
William and Candace Dennis. Taylor, Ron Aubrey, Tyrell. Wade and Delila Miller. So Jerry Trude. Gracious and loving God, as we pour water to the earth, let your spirit pour into our spirits. Lift us up this morning as we worship you. Be with us as we leave this place and take your light into the world. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. bulletin if you want to sing along hearts open minds awake Our worship series for Lent continues as we contemplate the ways we have looked for satisfaction in things that cannot satisfy. The Samaritan woman at the well in our scripture today found out that the water she came for was not really the water she needed so desperately. This woman had looked for love in many places, in many faces. And when she was finally offered a soul-quenching love by Jesus, she became a powerful messenger of good news. Just as the water given by God that flowed in the desert for the Israelites offered new life, the desert of our lives can be refreshed if we look for love regularly at the well of living water and offer life-giving water to others. Eyes open, Eyes open shut to break Much to learn from our mistakes Draw us closer in our heart Show us how to love Show us how to love Show us how to join together in opening our hearts to the love of God. Before we even utter a word, we can be assured that God will offer us grace and a way forward. For this reason, we can be honest with what pa most pains us and most pains us most about our own thoughts and actions. Let us pray together. Debbie? Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we come bringing our deepest longings and our failed attempts to satisfy them. We have of, often looked for love, for acceptance and security in the approval of others, giving away the power to claim ourselves that we are inherently beloved, created by God. We yearn for the lives that matter. We desire relationships that thrive. We want less regret. At times we fail to see that we have already given, that he is, let me start that one over. At times we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love of acceptance, 
You provide opportunities all around us to make the difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring to you our pleas of openness to the different ways of living. My friends, be assured by the palmist who says, our God is the rock of our salvation. In those hands is the deepest of the earth and the heights of the mountains. Let us respond together. We, we open, open our, our hearts, hearts <laughs> our minds, our, our souls, souls, our vision to the ways, ways of love, love created by God, God embodied in Jesus, and, and already moving in us by, by the Spirit. Spirit. We, we are, are forgiven, forgiven loved, loved, and freed. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to pass this love of peace to one another by crossing your arms across your chest, indicating love, and then opening them to the common two finger sign of peace. Peace. Let us stand for opening hymn. <laughs> scripture please be seated that um, we'll be moving into um, singing this song love us into fullness and it's the, all the melody lines in the bulletin if you need that let's sing the first verse love us into fullness touch us with your grace us do one verse at a time between the scripture readings. <laughs> ah, the first reading, Exodus 17, 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but then uh, was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. 
Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirst there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and the livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, so, the, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Merid, Mirabah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? I have found renewed expression of love going home and being with family. My sisters, my brother, and my parents, all still able to give and receive love. All who seem keenly aware of the blessing that love is. All who are still with me and I with them. God's grace is with us all. Amen. 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 Love us into fullness. Hold us in your care. Cheer us with your presence here and everywhere. Second reading is John 4. 5 through 42. So he came to the Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of, the, of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried out, sorry, there is a shadow, tried out, can I go over here? <laughs> tried out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, asked a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that you are saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get? get that living water. Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gives us the well, and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give to them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming to draw water. Jesus said to her, 
Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband. For you have five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestor, ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain <clears throat> nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship, them, worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is also called Jesus or Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They are astonished that he is speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking to her? When the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were in, on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were arguing, arguing him or excuse me, were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that I do not know, that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe of harvesting. The reaping is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. He's, they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All creation is the word of God. All creation speaks volumes of God. Love us into fullness, and we will be strong. Jesus, walk beside us, fill our hearts with song.
please join us on the refrain. As I went down in the river to pray, ocean washed my pain away, and you who wear the robe and crown, ocean, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, God, I washed my troubles away. And you who hold the lily and blue, God, thou show me the way. Mothers, oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, God, you washed my sorrows away. And you, the great, the mother of all, don't you show me the way. Oh, daughters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, daughters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, and washed my cares away, and you who caused the milk to flow, and show me the way. Oh, children, let's go down, let's go down, don't you want to go down? Oh, children, let's go down, down to the river to pray. I went, I went down, down in the river to pray, but I draw my holy, wash my tears away, and you, who guard the sacred land, holy, show me the way. Oh, women. Oh, women, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, women, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, Holy Mother, honor you each day, and you, great beginning and end, Holy Mother, show us the way. Good morning, church. Look for the thirst quencher. What a great scripture or set of scriptures we have, both from Exodus and from John. And it reminded me of these ads that we used to set, re, or see on TV, the stay thirsty ones, the most interesting man in the world. Um, But as we think about um, these two scriptures, this uh, segment from Exodus is, is, a, is a story we often place kind of down in, um, in Egypt still, but it's actually a place in Jordan, um, and we saw it in one of our trips to Petra, and it is kind of a really dry portion of the West Desert of, um, between Jordan and Saudi Arabia. And when we got to this little place on our way to Petra, right across the street from the hotel we were staying is this um, well. And this is the well, according to legend, where um, Moses struck the rock and split the rock and they've built a little house over the top of it like they do everywhere in the Middle East. Um, sometimes there's two or three of these places, depending on if there's an Eastern Orthodox one and a Catholic one or even the... Um, the YMCA has some of those different caves outside of Bethlehem. But um, this one is only one well um, that they call the Masa well, and it's just outside of Petra. And um, here's Alan Grisset with a picture of it. And um, people go there for water. Still to this day, it's still used as a, on a regular basis. And people will come and fill up their, uh, their water jugs from it. 
And um, our tour guide took us here and talked, and we read this scripture from Exodus 17 and remembered this story of Moses striking the rock and uh, bringing forth the water for, uh, to quench the thirst of those ancient Israelites. And of course, it gets uh, better art um, in historic art uh, around there as if it's like a gushing stream coming out the side of the rock rather than something that just comes up from underneath it. And I imagine every time there's an earthquake, it might shift something a little bit. And so it might produce a little bit more water or a little less water, depending on how things are going. But this story is, is foundational for not only God's provision for the people, but, um, but Moses' ability to be able to answer the pleas of the people. But this was a place of division. The people were fighting with each other, right? We heard that in the text. And as we think about this story from John 4, um, and the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, this is uh, a very interesting story. And as we think about all of the different aspects of it, we see lots of wells in Scripture. Isaac finds Rebecca at a well. Jacob meets Rachel at a well. And that's the same location of the same well, um, Jacob's well here in uh, the upper um, it's Samaria, so it's kind of north of Bethlehem, northeast of Jerusalem. Moses' marriage to Zipporah is connected to a well. A part of the discussion of Jesus and the Samaritan women are also about husbands. So there's a lot about betrothal and weddings um, in such stories throughout the Bible. It's almost a typology when we look at these different scriptures. And of course, um, the enmity between Judeans and Samaritans during this time is, um, is so great that we have a whole parable about the good Samaritan as if that's not a usual thing for Samaritans, right? It's like the good terrorist. And we have this back and forth between Jesus and the woman at the well. She's got a solid reputation, especially among her um, co-inhabitants of the village nearby. And Jesus talks to her, even though it's not according to custom, and even pays for it a little bit with his own disciples. So we see almost a clash of cultures in this story. And, and um, something kind of opens up from this story that teaches us something about God as well. So as we come uh, and dig a little deeper, we see that these wells um, invite us to ask this question too. What wells are we drinking from in our own lives, right? Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But what are the things that we chase after only to perpetually just chase after them over and over, being less and less satisfied with every time? Do we chase unhealthy relationships with things, with people, with gadgets, cars, smartphones. In our desperation for real connection, we can keep chasing after shallow connections on things like social media, consistently drinking from a well that only will lead us to being thirsty again and again. Do we pursue only empty approval from others in ways that aren't really substantial, jumping on outrage bandwagons, uh, gossiping to fit in? Jesus reminds us that there's a deeper well, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Now, of course, the woman at the well thought, oh, great, plumbing. You can give me plumbing? I would love that. And the Romans had plumbing. They had aquifers that would bring water into homes and into even um, restrooms in different parts of the Roman Empire, but that's not really what he's talking about. He's talking about a well of spirit, of truth, that we can drink from that will perpetually slake our deep human thirst. And we each have that thirst, right? Does Jesus share all of this with the Samaritan woman? This should indicate that there's no really exclusive club. That's really, I think, what we should take from this cultural interaction. There's no exclusivity. Jesus even breaks down the exclusivity his own disciples were trying to project on him. Why are you talking to this woman? What, what does she have to give you? And, and even trying to force food on him in this time. And so it's really uh, important for us to remember to seek out deep relationships and not shy from ones 
that might cross over arbitrary social taboos. Um, and I think the other lesson that this gives us is that God really does desire to be able to not only inhabit our lives and work through us, but that God actually does that on the, on the regular. That's God's regular way of working in the world is through us as ordinary people. Are you going to say something? And it's so central to the ancient world, and it's something that we've lost even in our own expression of Christianity, that hospitality that God expects of us uh, for others, but also um, this expectation that we might meet angels unaware, right? And so the question begs us, did she meet an angel or did he meet an angel? And, and what if we read it from both directions rather than just patronizing that Jesus only has something to give her? Maybe she had something to give Jesus as well, especially because God uses her to be able to open up a relationship with the rest of her own village, despite who she was with this Jesus. And despite wherever they may have been, she creates a container where they're able to be in relationship with him. And this new invitation to be in relationship creates this new community that they're after. Her physical thirst, she can say that anytime she wants to go to Jacob's well. She has a pail herself. She got water for Jesus himself. And, um, and we're invited to be that for other people as well, whether that's taking jugs of our own to be able to take the water away from that well to help those in need on life's journey or to be able to bring folks to those wells where we ourselves meet love. And I love this quote, at the well we meet love there to be betrothed, which means to promise by one's truth to the holy living God whose love reaches beyond the false boundaries that keep us dry and desolate, isolated from the fullness of humanity. We're made for relationships, aren't we? We're made to be a part of a community. And when we lose sight of that, or we put up artificial boundaries between ourselves and others, it's we who miss out, it's not the other people. It's we who miss out. And sometimes we think in our consumeristic world, to be a thirst quencher is to buy a certain brand of something that's going to th quench our thirst. And may maybe it has a little bit of extra sodium or potassium or magnesium in these, these metals that come in the real good water that replenish our bodies that we sometimes strip out of our even municipal water systems um, so that it tastes better it's actually less good for our bodies if it doesn't have those minerals that can that our body really needs as well um, so here's a great quote the simply we simpler we make our lives the more abundant they become there's no scarcity except in our souls and as we think about this interaction, we can think back on other scriptures like Isaiah 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food abundance. Even later in John Jesus says, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. They wanted a continuous flow of bread delivered to them like water in a pipe and plumbing like she was asking for as well, right? And Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And that believes word is one that, that sometimes um, the way that we read that as modern Americans kind of trips us up because this pistis, this belief, is really, uh, in many words, 
many times better translated as trust in our relationship these days because we've so ascribed belief in a set of doctrines um, as that which makes us a Christian because of our forefathers that really put a lot of emphasis on that, especially the more Anabaptist Christian ancestors that wanted people to make a decision for faith and to state publicly with a public statement of faith that they believe and follow Jesus uh, as Lord and Savior, rather than trusting him enough to actually live out his ways. And I think we miss something in the translation if we just make that physical ascent of belief rather than a deep trust that allows us to be able to tap into these living waters that we really need to sustain us. Sarah Ban uh, Brethnock also says, let's choose today to quench our thirst for the good life we think others lead by acknowledging the good that already exists in our lives. We can then offer the universe the gift of our grateful heart. So a lot of the lessons I think for today is how do we um, take on a different posture, not only for ourselves, but one of humility that allows us to be in relationship with others in a greater way. That's a part of the question. And even in those times of our lives where the water looks far off and everything that's close looks like it's very much desert. And if you think even back to uh, six months ago in the state of California, we were in the worst drought in 1200 years, right? And now we have so much water, we don't know what to do with it. They're trying to figure out how to get it back in the ground to refill our aquifers because of all of the atmospheric rivers that we've been living through. Even that's not the living water that Christ invites us to. Our challenge, Sally Cohn says, our challenge is to find the compassion for others that we want them to have for us. That sounds a lot like the golden rule. Um, Marvin J. Ashton said, if we could look into each other's hearts and understand the unique challenges each of us faces, I think we would treat each other much more gently with more love, patience, tolerance, and care. That's a big part of it too, especially breaking through those artificial barriers that we have. Reverend Dr. Jesse Jackson said, never look down on someone unless you're helping them up. And as someone who's living with Parkinson, and I don't know if you saw him, he was on that march on Selma, holding hands in a wheelchair with a lot of the other folks that were walking over the bridge in Selma. He's continuing to put himself out there and be uh, standing with those in need because the world needs more lovers, healers, and helpers. And if you can't find one, be one, right? especially these days with so much division going on. How do we find that compassion for ourselves? It begins with kindness to ourselves, as Pema Chodron says, but as um, the Dalai Lama says, compassion is the wish to see others free from suffering. That's a much more altruistic position that I think we're seeing in Jesus's interaction with this woman as well. How do we move from patronizing others to compassion and to feeling with, right, that compassion, feeling with. It's moving from sharing to caring, moving deeper and deeper into the empathy and not just sympathy for others or pity. It's placing ourselves within the lives of others and being in relationship. That's the invitation. That's where we find living waters. That's where we find enough. And I just wanted to encourage us to um, remember this this song that we sing maybe once or twice a year but this is that promise that we have from amos this vision of this world where everyone can care for each other where justice rolls down like a mighty water and righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream and mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean let praises rise high on the song the redeemed you want to sing with me where justice rolls down like a mighty water and righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream 
And mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean. Let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed. Let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed. That's what it's about. That's the heart of what God wants us to be able to live in is that place of justice where everyone has enough and we really are in relationship and are able to live out that love with one another because we know each other. It's like living into the platinum rule, right? Not just treating others the way they want to be treated. It's getting them to know them well enough that we treat them the way they want to be treated. And we've gotten to know them well enough to do that. Amen. We have prayer families. Let me get that out of your way. And we'll check in with the church at home here. And I might need that. Did all of you get one of these uh, bookmarks? Great. We're hoping that you're using that and connecting with that, especially as we're moving into, um, or continuing to move into Lent. Are there joys and concerns that the church at home has? Alan, there you are, good to see you. Did you see your picture in the, in the message? Yes, I did. Yeah. Greetings from the church at home. Greetings, good to see you. We see Ann and Chuck and Tom as well. Do any of you have a joy or concern that you'd like to share? All right. Joys and concerns that we have here together. Did I see your hand? This is a a month that the president is allowed to uh, make a decree if he wants to. And so every year Congress is given the authority to the President of the United States to declare this month the month for women's history. And our President Biden has done so. It's not obligatory. So it's not her heralded that much. But as I read about that this morning, I thought about all the women who are victims and participants in our opioid crisis, whose children are addicted, whose children have died, who, whose children have been lost in this. And I think of their pain and our pain as husbands and fathers and brothers and sisters. Uh, we have had deaths in our family, a daughter and a, and a nephew mm -hmm. uh, from, from that drug or involved in that, in that drug business. Uh, right now, about 80,000 Americans are dying every year. In Mexico, we're losing about 30 or 40,000 to the war that began when a d war on drugs was declared. And that war on drugs was actually being led by one of the top ministers in the country on behalf of one of the cartels. Now we blame Mexico for the trade in fentanyl, but we have to go back to the opioid crisis that was manufactured by American pharmaceutical companies, and when finally the access to easy opioids was restricted, then the cartels had a ready market. So we have to go back a little bit in history before we blame someone else on our problems and our deaths and our sadness. We need, we need to do something about this. We, we throw billions and trillions at foreign wars. Um, I don't see a commercial on television about using fentanyl. Um, I think we have to do more, and I, and I feel great pain for all those who suffer their addictions and the addictions of those they love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We need to look at the systems in order to really address it rather than just those that are caught up in it, right? Yes. Yeah, Donald, go ahead. 
Um, I want to say a prayer for my younger sister who is in the middle of midterms right now at Sac State. This is her first year at college. I am super proud of her and everything that she's accomplished and everything that she's becoming as a woman and whoever she wants to be. And uh, I also want to have prayers over just my life, my health, and as I transition to be a substitute teacher, what that will lead to. And also, um, to add to what this gentleman said, uh, this I want to say this month is Women's History Month. And I just pray that, you know, that this country and all of us will acknowledge what women bring to the table in all aspects of life, especially in faith communities. Amen. Lord, in your grace. Our prayer families this week are David Letha Arms, Dennis and Glenda Lamb, Park Boulevard Presbyterian in Oakland, and Little Brown Church of Sunol, kind of a famous little UCC church in Sunol. Um, and um, we're grateful to have Michael back after being with his family for so many weeks. Welcome home. Um, continue prayers for Julie as she goes through learning what she has to do for the rest of her life. I got to sit with her at one of her sessions, and oh my gosh, it's going to be a lot, but I think she can do it. Um, also, if anybody um, would like to do towels, uh, my husband did them yesterday for me. I picked them up, and he did them, so that was nice. So men can do laundry. Um, <laughs> Not just in Women's History Month. Yes, Not we do. Not just in Women's History, yeah. So, anyway. Lord, in your grace. Hear our prayers. Did I see your hand too, Merdell? No. Nope, okay. Uh, today is a self-development of people's day. Uh, we do, with the one great hour sharing, I guess it's the third or one of the three uh, offerings that we give through the one great hour sharing. And if we ever looked, because uh, I, I got an article, the, the self-development of people is a terrific um, method of helping people, not here just in the United States, but around the world. And uh, there's so many things that our church does provide people that need help. And a lot of them are women who have uh, created these, uh, you know, groups of, for business and, uh, and uh, groups to help other people. And uh, so we should really be proud of what our church is doing for people around the world through the self-development of people. That's an amazing program. We don't hear enough about it. You're right. And it uh, provides micro loans and micro grants to people around the world that apply to be able to like start a home business, things like that around the world that really makes things more resilient for them. Lord, in your mercy. Anyone else? Yeah, Gail. Thank you for praying for my friend Alan with pancreatic cancer. His surgery went all right and his outlook looks challenging, but tomorrow his wife Sharon has a mastectomy for ductal carcinoma, so please pray for Sharon. Lord, in your mercy. Continued prayers for Bill, Ginny, any of those that are continuing, and Ann? Yes. Prayers of gratitude for being with family. Uh, I was there for a couple of weeks um, celebrating my mother's 90th birthday. Um, it was a lovely celebration, albeit small. Um, you know, we didn't want to expose her to a lot of people and, and uh, what um, <clears throat> has been going around in terms of pandemic and and illness, so it was a small gathering. But um, we also did a card party again on Facebook, which turned out to be wonderful. And uh, thank many of you for um, sending cards to her and um, and showing your love to her through me. Um, and so much gratitude for that. Um, but um, but they are getting older, and um, and they have many challenges. 
Um, and to those challenges, my brother has been steadfast in his support and love for them. Um, and I give thanks for my brother and his attention to them um, as he delivers them to doctor appointments and physical therapy appointments and on and on and on on a very regular basis. So um, I come back with a full heart. Um, wish that I could be there more often with them, but glad that they're in good hands. So thank you, church family. Lord, in your mercy. In this season of Lent, we come together in prayer using this ancient form of the church, Kyrie eleison, meaning God have mercy on us. We'll be led in various intercessions and prayers and categories, followed by singing, singing this simple chant as a response to each one. I'm going to try and, and say aloud other things that you may share for the folks at home. So please say it loud enough that I can hear it, unless it's something you'd rather keep private. Let us sing. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Loving Creator, we come to you asking for your living water of life for this planet and for all of its creatures. You have created wonders and called it good. Show us how to love so that we might participate in the flourishing of this goodness. Show us how to love where there seems so much fear. We pray for this day for these global concerns. For Palestine and Kashmir. For Turkey and Syria. Ukraine. For Ukraine. for the cultural genocide going on against the Uyghurs in China. For the gun violence in the United States. For Mexico and the war on drugs, for gun violence here in the United States. And the victims of? Severe of severe weather. God have mercy in this singing we lift up to this world to you with our love. we come to you asking for your living waters flow in and through our communities. Let our thirst for love be quenched in care and kindness shown to all, especially those who are in need. Show us how to love with pitchers of mercy raining down to water the potential of this place. We pray for this, this day for these community and church concerns. Homelessness. For those living with food insecurity. Mental health. For mental health. Our schools, our young people. Safety for all people. For, for those without health insurance. For the LGBTQ plus community from youth to those who are. For those in the queer community being targeted by the religious right. For every infirmity of body and mind, God have mercy. In this singing, we lift up the community to you with our love. parent we come to you asking for your living water to make our homes and relationships wells of love lead us to water in the deserts of loneliness 
Show us how to love with the depth of your well of mercy, your well of grace. Help us to honor and cherish each other, letting love lead rather than envy or hatred or fear or resentment. We pause in silence as we each lift up in our own hearts the relationships that need your love. God of mercy, in this singing we lift up each other to you with our love. Lover of our souls, we come to you asking for your living water in our own lives. Help us to look to you for our worth, for the love that quenches our yearning for acceptance. When we are tempted to search for love in things that cannot love us in return, help us to let go, making room for that which matters. Help us to know the lure of your love for us so that we may be your love in this world, expressing it in our communities and the lives with whom we intersect each day. God of mercy, in this singing, we open ourselves to your love. And so as your people following in the ways of your son Jesus, who set the pattern of love as right relationship with each other, we pray with confidence the prayer that he taught us, saying, O God, o God of sky, sky and earth, earth, we reverence your presence both within us and beyond. May that sustain us in the way of compassionate sharing. Help us to be forgiving, forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. Liberate us from guilt that learning from our mistakes we may move beyond self-centeredness to that depth of being in which we are one with all things. This way of love, peace, and justice is for all the earth, for human beings, and for all living creatures, both now and forever. Amen. During this time of hybrid worship, we cannot pass the plates to offer our gifts. Please place your offerings in the plates at the table, at the offering, or at the closing. Or you can place your offerings in the plates in the back uh, table on your way out. If you cannot give in person, we ask that you send all of your offerings online or by mail to Merdell Dibdahl whose address is in the announcements in eBlast. Why 
should you spend your life except for the Lord? And, and let all Let them come to water, and let all who are weary, let them come to the Lord, all who labor with the dust, how can your soul Except for the Lord, and let all the poor, let them come to the water, bring the ones who are laden, bring them all to merciful and gracious we who receive your bounty pray that you accept this offering from your people remember in your love those who have brought them and those from whom they are given and so follow these gifts with your blessings that it may promote peace and goodwill among all in Jesus name amen amen, amen. Are there any other announcements we need to make for the care team? Please come up and give it. Sorry, I forgot to give you your slide, didn't I? I'm sorry. Go ahead and be seated. I know you're ready to go home. <laughs> um, peace and blessings to all of you from the care team. I know on this 40 days of Lent, um, we usually talk about sacrifice, uh, giving up of something in our daily lives, but instead of emphasizing sacrifices, sacrifices, we are focusing on love that inspires us. We retell the story of God's love for us. We remember the passion and death of Jesus and the fact that he loves us so much that he was willing to suffer and die. The main thing we are called to do in return is to love him back. One of the most beautiful ways we can show our love is through our giving to others. We are showing God our love in our willingness to recognize Christ in others. When we give to those in need, we should recall Jesus' own words. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Lent really is a season of love.
that is expressed through our small givings in many ways, the prayer, just the time we spend thinking about our faith. The care team is grateful for your gifts that make this ministry possible in our church. So we pray that this Lent will be a time for you to grow in your understanding of God's deep love for you, as well as the time for you to grow in your commitment to love God back. Amen. 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 Michael's got an announcement for us too. Easter is just around the corner. Ding dong, the choir is going to sing. The choir is going to sing for Easter. Yay! Yay. Woo. So today at 11.45, um, if you all who would love to sing would just join me here, um, we'll talk just briefly about what we're going to do, um, find our bearings, and um, talk about rehearsing um, because it's coming right up. So we've got to get ready. Oh, yeah. It's Resurrection Day. We're resurrecting the choir. <laughs> Amen? Uh, Amen? Amen. Amen. Please rise as we sing our closing song. other forth with these words go forth into the world, the world. Looking, looking for love in all the right places, places. We, we will look for signs of that thirst quencher and we will pour out the life-giving water of love wherever we go be those little Christs in the world that express that love compassion peace and justice of Jesus of Nazareth 
with those that you meet this week. It's a wild and weary world out there, and so many are in need of just a touch. Let us be that presence of Christ for all. Amen. 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 As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. See you at Fellowship Hour.